Welcome to Renegade Inc, the talk show that allows us to think differently. It was a man named Albert Einstein who said that logic will get you from A to B, but imagination will take you everywhere. At a time when the planet faces its biggest environmental challenge and humans struggle to redefine work in the face of automation, there has never been a better time to imagine a different reality. Dan Rosengard is a Dutch designer who's addressing some of the most pressing issues we face. We travel to his studio in Rotterdam to talk about the importance of making the necessary leap to a brave new world. I began by asking him that if we have had peak stuff, what does he see as the new modern luxuries? What is a new modern luxury to you? It's funny because it used to be a time that it was about owning things and possessing things. Yeah. But the weird part is if you go to these big Asian cities like Shanghai or Beijing or Shenzhen, there's a whole new generation who has more a focus on, on clean air, clean water, clean energy, having places which are good for people. The city has somehow become a machine that is killing us eh, with the pollution and the CO2, etc. So we live five to six years shorter. Children have lung cancer when they're six years old. That's crazy. So how can we use technology and design to improve the world around us? I think, that, I think that, that's for me the, the true luxury, that you have places which are good for you and that you somehow feel connected with as well. When I was cycling in Shanghai three years ago... You're a brave man to cycle in Shanghai. Yeah, yeah but my Chinese friends were like, are you poor? Okay. Can you not pay for a taxi? I'm like, well, no, I'm I like cycling. I'm Dutch. I, I'm Dutch. I, our, our, our prime minister cycles to the House of Parliament. And that changed since eight or ten months ago with the bike sharing companies and the Mobike and the OFO. We changed in China. Yeah. Yeah, so now it's everywhere. There are almost too many. Yeah? Um, Why? So what happened? What was that change? I think it was sort of two or three companies investing in it, bringing it out there. Um, the, the, the WeChat, yeah, the, the digitalization of society. So you have the QR tech, you don't have to pay, you can find it, you can share it. And it's also that, that, that they were like, how can we make the city more human? You know, We don't want to be a traffic jam. We want to be fast, we want to be cheap. So the city is coming back to Beijing and Shanghai, and that's beautiful. It is what you're saying, that the designer, the job of the designer, the job of the maker, yeah. is to be able to open the hearts and minds of people for them to think differently so they can have these new modern luxuries, go about their life in a different way. Well, my job as a designer or as an artist or as a maker is to come up with new proposals, how I want the world to look like. And sometimes this has a more practical agenda, eh, that I can say, hey, look, we can make a bicycle which suck up polluted air, clean it, and release it so we have clean air. And sometimes it's more poetic to sort of show here we can make light emitting bicycle path, to show where Van Gogh lived or to sparkle the notion of wonder. I want to move away from computer screens and pushing like buttons. I think it's weird that we're sort of feeding our hopes, our dreams, our desires, our money to, to the robots. We're robot food. And, and what do we get back? Nothing. Explain that. What's robot food? Well, we're just feeding our, our Facebook, Twitter, Weibo, WeChat with, with our ideas, our dreams. And what do we get back? A, a likey. You know, that's, that's a bad deal. <laughs> no, but that's a bad deal. So when is technology helping us? So it's weird that we're sort of feeding the cloud, the virtual world, while our physical world is crashing. Yeah, the rising sea level, CO2, smog, uh, noise pollution. The situation we are in, yeah, with the, the, the global challenges we are in, how I see it, in a way, it's sort of bad design. Yeah? <laughs> but unconsciously, unconsciously, we are designing our world with our CO2 emissions, etc. So we can do two things. We can say, oh, we're sad, depressed, let's blame government, hide in a corner and cry, <laughs> right, yeah, right. blah, blah, blah. Or we can say, well, in a way, we created the situation we are in. Let's design, let's engineer our way out of it. That's an incredibly hopeful message, isn't it? But there's no way back. When we, then we think about people who are locked in the old way of doing things, an old way of thinking, yeah. one of your jobs, uh, not just as a designer but also as an artist, is to inspire people, create the wonder or jolt them out of that old way of thinking. Mm -hmm. How do you do it? Well, there's not a lack of money in this world, nor a lack of technology. There, there's a lack of imagination. Right. We're sort of stuck a bit because right. we, we live in an old economical system which is about money and time. And, and property we, and yeah, ownership. And, and ownership, but we also want new economical values which are about clean air, right. clean water and clean energy. How do we validate it? What is the price of clean air? You tell me, and who decides that anyway? I don't know. I really don't know. So, so somehow what we are doing here in the studio with the team of designers and engineers is sort of showing the, the beauty, the schoonheid of this new world 
hopefully to, to speed up the process. Schoonheid is a very beautiful word that, that, that we use actually a lot here at the studio. So, so you can't directly translate it. No, it has it. sort of two meanings right. it, because it's not beauty. It's, it's a sort of like beauty yeah, that you look at a painting like a Rothko or, or a Ruisdaal and you're like, oh, yeah, it, it, or at the clouds and it, it inspires you, but it also means like clarity or cleanness, clean air, clean water, clean energy. So I think our desire for schoonheid is, is the thing that drives us. There's always desire for harmony in a way. Yeah? That, that's sort of interesting. Or, or a balance, yeah. let's so to speak. Or non-duality. Yeah. So it's the same here. If I only focus on money, I start making bad art. And if I don't focus on, on the practical things in life, I don't have the engine to make it happen. And you say the same in, in Asia, so the desire for progress create side effects that we never imagined, like, like pollution, and it's hitting us in the face, and we're like <coughs> so, so, yeah, this is the struggle we are in, the struggle for, in progress. Is what you're talking about, in a different way, a natural law? Well, it's funny, because where we are right now, in the Netherlands, I think 80-85% is below sea level. So without technology, without creative thinking, we would literally die, we would drown, right here. So in a landscape where I grew up, hey, where I built my tree hut, I'm surrounded by a landscape which is sort of artificial, where we try to find a harmony between nature and technology. And that says something about the Dutch. Because if we would have just been practical, right, pure pragmatism, or we would have just moved to Germany. But we stayed. And we sort of used creative thinking, the technology, the dikes and the dams and the, and the government, right, the management, to make a place which we call home. We, we created our own habitat. So in a way, design and innovation is in the DNA of this landscape. Yeah. I do a lot of projects in, in Asia and China, which I love. I learn a lot from it. But they're doing in 50 years what Europe did in 500 years. So it's like <laughs> and it's funny because when I present projects in Europe, usually they ask in the first meeting, are you sure you've done it before? <laughs> like risk avoiding, they're, they're sort of checking the, 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 the grounds. And in Asia, first meeting, they always ask, are you sure it is the first time? And so that's sort of fascinating. Just by asking the type of question, um, and of course I'm generalizing, and there, 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 there are different people but everywhere. But that risk appetite is out there. there. There's a notion of curiosity. It's a dreamlike scenario for a maker who, who, who's interested in creating a different world. Yeah, but of course there's always 80% BS to get 20% beauty. Uh, <laughs> so there are different struggles there, but, but, but I think curiosity is important. And that's my job, to make proposals. Like we worked on energy harvesting kites which fly high up in the air, connected with the ground via cable. It's a smart kite, so it can stay up in the air for weeks, maybe months. And because of the pushing and the pulling yeah, of the wind, like a dynamo on the bicycle, it, it generates power, 20 to 100 kilowatt per hour. So that's enough for 150, 200 households. That's a lot, eh? And we started to make these lines light emitting, a sort of very strong, flexible glass fiber. And so we sort of showed the beauty of green energy. Look, energy is everywhere. We just have to harvest it. We don't need these big windmills, this chunk of steel or aluminium. The playfulness of the kite, eh? uh, which, by the way, is a Chinese invention. And then we sort of we upgrade it and bring it back. So it's technology, it's functional, but it's also the cultural iconic thinking that they, they ah, yeah, this is our, our symbol. It's our tradition, but in a new way. And that's that, then, then they get really excited about that. And uh, then you put a business case on top of it. And, yeah. um, and go. Are you aware that there, there, that there are three ungrateful phases of innovation? Tell me them. Phase one, you present something new, and then what do people say? In Britain, certainly, they go, well, very interesting. Yeah, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. But, but their immediate reaction is, I don't know, they, they push back. Yeah, they push back. And what I uh, encountered is that they say, it's not possible. Yeah. Maybe the British are more reserved. They're thinking that, but they won't. Yeah, say yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're <laughs> Maybe the Dutch are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's not possible. Okay. And then you spend a lot of love, time, energy, engineers, designers here, prototypes, and you show, look, look, it's possible. And then they say, okay, okay, okay. So it's possible. But then we go to phase two. It's not. Think of government. Uh, well, it was not, so it's not legal? It's not within the legislation? It's not allowed. Very good. Yeah. It's not allowed. Right. So the first time we worked on the, our light emitting highways, our smart highway, uh, two months before the opening, minister would come, big thing. We got a, a letter from the government saying, the permit to build is cancelled, is denied. And we're like, so we go there. We're like, what's going on? <laughs> we have a big opening, we're working. And, um, and they say, yeah, there's a Dutch law which says that every line on the road has to be white. And you want to make a light emitting. Uh, nobody slept for two nights. And in the middle of the, the second night, I think, I got a call from uh, the Heimans infrastructure company I worked with pick up the phone, he said, I got it. So what we did is put a sign um, 
in front of the road, which says it's a Dutch word called proofvak, which means like testing ground. And then suddenly when you place that uh, sign, after that anything is possible. Right, really. And so, so, that, so, that so, make, gets so make a laboratory, make it a testing ground. And then we go to phase three. That's the most annoying. So it's not possible. It's not allowed. Yeah. We've conquered that. Eh? We sort of fixed that. What's the worst that can happen when you, when you have something and you spend your, like two years, your love, your energy, and it's there and you've proven it. And what's the worst thing that somebody can say to you then? Tell me. Four months ago, top official China central government. Eh? Perfect suit, like, like, like uh, perfect English, smog free project. We launched it in Beijing. We've proven that it worked. We were, etc. It was growing. And top official guy came to me, he patted me on the back and he said, that's a good idea. Why didn't you do it before? <laughs> and we're like, where were you three years ago? You know, we've been trying to contact you. Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying it with a smile because once you realize that this is the perception of people, and in a way you change their perception, eh, because you went from it's not possible to why is it not everywhere, that's a way of change. And it's my job to 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 make things, to facilitate that change. Also for myself, eh, that, that, I, that, I, that I question reality. Yeah. What is normal, what is not normal? I question my reality every day. Uh, where do ideas come from? Ideas come to you. And nobody owns an idea. Ideas take you somewhere. So you have to be this voluntary prisoner of your own imagination. It's sort of a taste in your mouth. You don't know the ingredients. You make your little shopping list. You start cooking. The first pancake always fails. I don't know why, but it always fails. Eh? And you start to interact. And in the end, you, have, you make a mistake, always part of it. And in the end, you have your top Michelin one-star dessert, and voila, it's for everyone, it becomes shareable. But it's way more process and it's way more facilitating than one could imagine. Because people think, oh, yeah, I have an idea, Dan has an idea, and then he does it. Which is sort of the summary, but it's way more fluid and way more interactive. When you do something new, you always start as an amateur. Now I'm an expert in smog. I can say that. I've worked for three years on it. I met smart people. I was reading. You know, I was obsessed by it. But I started as an amateur. Now again, uh, we're amateurs for something new, for space waste, space debris. 29,000 objects around uh, this size floating in space caused by us, a broken piece of satellite. But you called that sm uh, space smog. Yeah, so yeah, 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 it's the smog of the universe. And when a tiny, tiny little particle hits an existing satellite because of the speed, it goes through the Kevlar, satellite goes down. No more Facebook, no more banking. No more Facebook. No more banking. Uh, yeah. No more banking. Why am I Not a great it, example. Yeah, maybe, yeah. <laughs> and nobody knows how to fix it. Yeah. We need to design a way out of it. It's the only way. The idea comes, you think, oh God, this idea is it's really like I'm going to have to yeah. do something about this. You then yeah. assume the position of a of the student, really. And when you've assumed yeah. the, the position of an yeah. interested amateur, you can fail, fail quickly, move yeah. on to the next thing. Why aren't we actually embracing failure and saying we should be less because scared? Because we're scared. Yeah, well, why are we so scared? I don't know. If you were scared of that idea you have in the shower, you wouldn't, you wouldn't get out of the no, shower. No, I am scared. Right. But I don't let my decision be based on it. I think everybody's scared and everybody's curious. So the, how? The, the key question you need to make for yeah. yourself as an individual yeah. is what defines you? Where do you base your decision on? Is it the scared side or the curious side? It's a choice. And they're two very different lives, aren't they? Completely. They struggle with each other. How do you remain at ease with your uneasiness? You make stuff. You make a sketch. You put it on the table. You say to the team, I'm not sure what it is, but it has to be ready in three months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go. And, and talking about education, so it's interesting that I think 50, 60% of the people here are self-educated. 80% of what I'm doing now, I was never educated for. We had children here, we had an open day yesterday. We had international journalists asking the question, where do you get your inspiration from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, eh, like, uh, the children came, and the questions that they asked were better than most journalists. I bet. That was really, I they bet. were really like, whoa, that's okay. You know, this is my card, give me a call when you're 16. Yeah? Of course, I need, I need a certain skill set and brain yeah. and capacity, and, and, but a lot of things you can, you can learn. Yeah. But the attitude or curiosity, you cannot learn. You need to own it. There's such a, an amazing energy in making stuff that you have an idea and then you put it out there and it triggers people. It becomes part of their, of their mental map. It becomes part of their default of what is and what is not possible. So you're sort of questioning reality. Why do we accept pollution? Why do we have streetlights burning the whole night when nobody's there consuming electricity? So you question the world, you come up with new proposals and then in that way you're, you're setting a new default, step by step by step. 
That's the power of design. So you need governments investing it top down, but you need makers who are sort of like uh, bottom up and you meet in the middle and that creates impact. Only technology will make us more lazy. And only social innovation is just a symbol. Yeah, so you need science and conscious uh, social awareness. And then that's the change we are in right now. I, I, that's, that's how I feel about it. Welcome back to Renegade Inc, the show that allows us to think differently. Before we talk more with the designer, Dan Rosengard, let's have a look at what you've been tweeting about in this week's Renegade Inc Index. First up, we've got a tweet from Nerdy. China is constructing a forest city that will eat its own toxic smog using 1 million plants and 40,000 trees to combat global warming. Amazing. Next from Jennifer Keysmat, how we design streets determine whether or not walking to school, work, play or visit is a real choice. It's not enough to say that we should walk because it's good for our health and our environment. We need to design our cities to make this a first and obvious choice. Next from Nilofer Merchant, the future is not, let me repeat, not a human-centered economy. That framework would argue it's woman-man verse machine, which misses the point. The future of work is ideas-centered, creativity, judgment, decision-making, verse, repeatable cog-like work, i.e. automatable. Next up from Kim Shirell, the role of the artist is to motivate people to make them understand their society is their responsibility. And that's from Alexander Rodnyansky. Next from Suzanne Brown in a landmark move, world's first plastic free aisle opens in Netherlands supermarket Eco Plaza, giving shoppers the choice of 700 plus plastic free items uh, and not before time. And finally from Waterstones, ideas are like rabbits you get a couple and learn how to handle them. Pretty soon, you've got a dozen. And that's from that wonderful writer, John Steinberg. When we talk about the making process, I don't know if you, this resonates with you, but there is, from my experience anyway, a, a moment, a, an all is lost moment, where you are sort of two thirds of the way through, nothing seems to be working, things seem to be falling apart. Have you experienced that? Um, and if so, is, it, is that a common thing per project that you get to a point where and things just don't seem to gel, it doesn't seem to work? Yeah, of course. Where do we go from here? I think, I think every project that we did had that moment. That you sort of hear the piano music of the Titanic and you're like, what, what is that piano music sort of doing? Why am I hearing this piano music all the time? It's like, oh, it is the Titanic. It's good to know about that moment though, isn't it? Not take it too seriously. Well, you should take it serious, but you should somehow... It's an ingredient. So, for example, when we made Gates of Light eh, for the Afsluitdijk, 60 monuments, which we needed to renovate it as a sort of new entrance for this beautiful, famous 32-kilometer dam. One of the first constraints was that we couldn't work with um, technology because there was no electricity, there's a lot of salt, rain, weather, so everything would sort of eh, die and, and, and tear down and, 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 and uh, not work within a year and a half, for sure. So they said, no maintenance and not too much technology. So I'm like, yeah, but, you know, but we want to make poetry. <laughs> and then we were like, okay, so we want to do something with light and energy and sustainable poetry entrance. So what kind of light? But there's already light there, of course, on the highway. The headlights of the car. We're like, ah. So we started to work with uh, light reflective materials, uh, sort of renovating, covering these buildings with light reflective materials. So based on the headlights of the car, the buildings il illuminate. It's like really like you're driving through Tron, like, like, like science fiction. Energy neutral lighting. And when nobody's there, there, no, there there's no light, no light pollution. So there's only light when people are there. So somehow the restraint, which somehow was annoying and sort of sabotaged the project, the process, became an ingredient which pushed us to make a better design. That's not always the case. No. Sometimes you also just need to say, no, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna accept this. Sometimes you have to zoom in and say, I can learn. And sometimes you have to zoom out and say, forget it, man. This is not, this is not me, this is not us. So, um, and again, we come back to this dance. And that's my role. That's my job, to do that. When to say no many times to, to get that good yes. Because if you surrender to the idea, you, sometimes you get lost. But if you become too like diva, this is me, this is my idea, you don't get the stuff realized. So it's more a ping pong than a bowling right, uh, right. track. Is there a freedom to a tight brief? Of course, you create freedom, you take freedom. 
So is the knowledge actually in the brief? Can you, that's what you're... Well, there's a transformation of the brief. So a client comes to me and says, I like grass, but what he actually means is I like green. He doesn't know that, that's why he comes to me. I don't know that, but the, we <laughs> no, figure no. that out during the it's way. Exactly. So there's a, there's a mutation, there's a transformation in which we, we, we feed it with, with hope, with knowledge, with, with technology, <laughs> with ideas, and then it sort of grows. And, and that also makes it unique. And the, the team and the client and me, we feel that. So ideas take you somewhere, and that's the beauty. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's really, it's a journey. And that makes it really intense and really complicated and like a little bit gray hair, but that also makes it really exciting, yeah. It's funny, we have this saying in the studio, it's um, uh, uh, Maya, not the famous uh, temples in Mexico, but it's called most advanced yet acceptable. It was sort of a, a, a philosophy of an American professor, 1923, something like that. Um, so you always try to find the edge of what is and what is not possible. So if you go too far, you fail. It doesn't work or everybody thinks it, it whatever or yeah. nobody cares. If you're too conservative. But if you stay too safe, it's boring or there's somebody else who does it, before, it for you. Yeah. 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 So, so finding the sort of the edge of what is and what is not possible, that's the sweet spot. That's where the magic happens. And you will feel that edge. You will be like, Ooh, that, okay, this is the edge, but, but it also, the edge pushes the quality and, and creates the impact, makes that people all around the world feel connected with it. But you have a love of China, don't you? Yeah, um, yeah. And I do. Yeah. Are the Chinese really committed to in the environmental cause, or is some of it PR? And I don't mean that cynically. No, even if you would. Um, are they truly committed, or if are they paying some lip service to it? If four or five years ago we would have this conversation, which I think we did eh, five, yeah. six years ago, a long time ago, we would have said that China would be the leader in sustainable development and investment, we would have been no way. No way. But they're doing it. America is letting go and China is taking the lead. If you look at the hard capital they're <laughs> investing, but also the soft capital, the investment and the desire for this clean air, clean energy. So What's the difference between hard and soft capital very quickly? So hard capital is just the money, yeah. the investment, the technology, the Alibaba, Tencent, just investing billions and billions in, in the solar panel, in the windmills, in the, in the change of, uh, of, of car industry, etc. Soft capital is, is people getting excited about clean air, people going to our smog free project and talking about the clean air, people taking photos when they have a blue sky day and, and, and sharing it, you know, it's, it's like Disney World. It's like <gasps> when these two worlds meet and, and relate to each other, then you get change. It's easy to judge, it's easy to blame, but it's all planet Earth. I think it's fascinating how they, how they try to find a balance. It's not perfect, and you can say things about democracy and, and ownership and state control and all that things, but at least there's sort of a, a desire to invest in new ideas, and that, 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 that may be the beginning of, of everything. Yeah. And if I can be a part of that movement, a, mov a movement that would make me very happy. And yeah. also to be part of the scale of that movement. Yeah. Because, I mean, yeah, exactly. you forget Europe. Well, don't forget Europe. Well, don't Embr forget em 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 Embrace Europe, but... But, but from but a scale really. point of view, tiny in comparison. Yeah. But, but yeah, you need yeah, the pedigree, yes. the heritage, the, the thinking. I mean, we're here in the Netherlands. It's safe, it's liberal. You have a government who's open for our new ideas. You know, you, there are commissions, there's an interaction. Great. But if we don't invest in new ideas, we die, we drown, we become an open air museum. Uh, somebody's gonna put a fence around it and just charge four euro per hour. And, that, that, and, and, and everything them. I've done yeah. will be a decoration, not a reforming, but a decoration. And that's the horror. Yeah. And, and I think, I don't get it, why we're not curious about the future anymore here. I just don't get it. Somehow, maybe we're, we're sort of done, it's finished. It's like, okay, you know, we just, whatever. It's, what is it, human evolution is 4.1 billion years? From what and we stop now? <laughs> and, uh, and now we sort of now we stop. It's, guys, okay, what we happened? had 4.1 billion years. We, we've all got an iPhone. Sort of, I think it's yeah. We, we, <laughs> we got, got it. <laughs> we, go, we got the iPhone. Now we stop for the rest of the eternity because the star the sun will explode in the star in 4.1 billion years from now. They calculate more or less. We're in the middle where life started and where we're going. So what are we going to do? We're going to sort of stop for another <laughs> form on one wheel. No, I'm exaggerating, but yeah, yeah. it's also the, the numbers, talking about numbers, you know how much money is spent on war each day? 1.9 billion euro or something like that per, per, per day yeah, on, on dominating. So I would love to do like another one, one extra Christmas day, you know, one that I get the budget of one day, no war. And we invest that in new ideas. Boxing day. 
Something like that. Yeah, no, like, yeah, exactly. The Boxing yeah. Day One project. day, no worry. I mean, you're not going to really miss it. I mean, it's not going to shift the tide completely. But seriously, you know, so, so every time people say, yeah, innovation is expensive and yeah, it's, risk of, it's risky. And I'm like, no, 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 1.9 billion per year. That is risky. Yeah. The role of the maker yeah. is to question reality. Don't stuck in opinions. Push it into proposals. And in the end, it's about questioning ourselves. What do we want? What do we want with the world around us? How do we want the world to look like? That's a question that everybody should answer in his or her own way. We did a project with a glowing nature, light emitting algae, 700 billion year old microorganism, which are light emitting. So I can show you downstairs. You shake them and they wake up. And the amount of light that we created with them, so bright. And you can drink it, it's, it's pure nature. Why can th that not be the street light of the future? I think a lot of the innovation is a way of taking things which are already there, but reinterpreting, re reactivating them. What's happening at the moment? That so we're launching the, a new smog-free project in Poland in, in two days. China is growing. We're doing India, Colombia, Mexico, uh, building clean air parks, doing the, the smog-free bicycles, compressing the collected particles in the, in the jewelry or smog-free cufflinks. And therefore, you donate clean air, 1,000 cubic meters of, of clean air. But we will keep on infiltrating in these public spaces, triggering imagination, triggering poetry, bringing new pragmatism, and I think showing the beauty of the, of the, of, of the new world with the hope that will speed up and widen the acceptance of it. Makers watching this now, because there are an awful lot of younger people now who want to go into the world and make stuff. What would you say to them? You find an idea, you start becoming one with it, it will guide you. You will have a lot of people telling you what you want cannot be done. You ignore them. You just ignore, you listen a bit, but not too much. You ignore them and then you make it happen and you will learn stuff. It will take you somewhere to a place that you've never been before. And again, there's not a lack of money in this world or technology, but there's a lack of an imagination. And the maker triggers that imagination in, in a very practical, concrete way. And that combination between poetry and pragmatism, that is the true maker. And, uh, and it's also fun. Not easy, but it's fun. And uh, so, uh, yeah, good luck with that. Yeah. The Damn. world needs it. Yeah. It really does. Thank you very much. For your time. My pleasure, guys. Yeah.